Hey everyone, let's take a look at our first um, question on our sample final, uh, and we're going to graph a, a rational function. So usually when I graph a rational function, the first thing I want to do is I want to factor the numerator and the denominator, see if anything cancels, because if we do have a common factor, we'll have a whole. So let's just see what we've got here. So the numerator would factor into x plus 2, x minus 1. The denominator would factor, I can take that GCF, that greatest common factor of x out. That would leave me with x squared minus 1, but that is a difference of squares, so that's going to break down also. So we have x plus 2, x minus 1, and then we have x, x minus 1, x plus 1. Now, I do see that there is a factor common to the numerator and common to the denominator. So what I typically do is I put that this, this function, the one we're being asked to sketch, looks basically like the simplified version, x plus 2 over x times x plus 1, except, and let me use my highlighter here, this one has a hole at x equaling 1, and this one doesn't have a hole. So they look pretty much the same. And there's most of the time, it's easier to use the simplified version, just keeping in the, in the back of your mind somewhere, that there is a hole in the actual graph that, or the actual function we were asked to sketch. So like I said, a lot of times I'll use the simplified version, but I will still account for the whole when I get to my traits. So let me erase some of my notes here, just so it doesn't get all junked up. All right, and let's start to go through this. Now for domain, I actually do want to use the original version because I want to look at all the places where my denominator was zero. So I will just do my scratch work here. So for my domain, I want to look for where my original denominator is zero, and I can see that's at x equaling zero, one, and negative one. So those are the three values that I need to um, boot from the domain. So we will go from negative infinity, let's see the smallest number is negative one, and then I need to go negative one to zero, and then I need to go zero to one. Ooh, we got a lot of them. And then finally, one to infinity. So I've got all of that happening. And now let's go ahead and let's take a look at some x-intercepts. And let me just put a little divider line here. So for x-intercepts, how that typically works is you let the opposite letter zero out. So really what we do for any function is we let y equal zero, and then we solve for x. But because your function is a rational function in this case, what that means for the y value to be zero is that the numerator has to be zero, and it should be the numerator only. And where I'm referencing that is, let me, again, let me undo some of my shading up here just so I can talk about it, is that what you want to do is you want to use the simplified version and set that numerator to zero. Because if you use the original, you've got to take into account that, yes, one tech, or x equaling 1 technically zeroes out the numerator, but it also zeroes out the denominator at the same time, and that winds up being a whole. So it's a matter of we just have to keep track of where everything zeroes out. Is it just the numerator? then it's an x-intercept. If it's just the denominator, it's a vertical asymptote. And if it's both, it's a whole. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set x plus 2 to 0. And that's going to give me x equaling negative 2. But keep in mind, I need to write this up as an ordered pair. So I've got negative 2 comma 0. All right, for y-intercepts, they're typically a little bit simpler. So this one, you let x equal 0 and solve for y. All right, but the problem with this is if I let x equal 0, keep in mind 0 isn't in my domain, right? That was one of those numbers that we threw out because if you look here, zero, x equaling 0 would 0 out the denominator and the denominator only. So I don't actually have a y-intercept, so I'll put none here. But because x equals 0, 0 is out just the denominator, that actually will be one of my vertical asymptotes. But my, for my vertical asymptotes, again, use the simplified version and set that denominator to zero, not only did I get x equaling zero, I would have also gotten x equaling negative one, so I'm gonna add that in there. Now for a whole, and let me change highlighter colors just so we can keep track, I do have that factor that is common to the numerator and denominator, which means I will have a whole, and it'll be at the x coordinate of x equaling one. But like any point on a graph, even though this is technically gonna be a whole, a hollowed out point, um, there needs to be a y coordinate, so let's find it. So how you find the y-coordinate is you go ahead, and let me scroll here, is you want to plug in x equaling 1 to the simplified version of your function. And wherever that y-value lands, that's where the whole will be. So let's, let's take a look at that. So if I say y at x equals 1 is approximately, and I say approximately because technically it's undefined, right? It's not actually in our domain. This is going to be a hollowed-out whole. 
let's see, we would have 1 plus 2 in the, in the numerator, excuse me, 1 times 1 plus 1, so that would give me 3 halves when I simplify that, and that is going to be my whole, and I'll keep that in mind. Let me erase my little highlighter there. All right, so now we need to move on to end behavior. So if I look at my, I'll, I'll, I'll go off of the simplified version. If I look at my simplified version, let me put the approximate symbol because this isn't exactly our function. Again, our looks like this function, but it has a whole at one comma three halves. Basically this, if I look at the numerator, the degree is one. And if I look at the denominator, you do have an X times an X. So that would have left our denominator with an X squared or really one over X. But the takeaway here is that the degree in the numerator is smaller than the degree in the denominator, right? So if you look on this version, here's the degree is one, here the degree is two. Denominator has the bigger degree. Even in the simplified version, here the degree is zero, here the degree is one, but the denominator has the larger degree. And when we have that case, we always have that horizontal asymptote at y equaling zero. All right, so I have all my traits except for range, and I personally, I don't get the range until I've gone through and done the graph. So let's go ahead, and what I'm also gonna do at the same time is I'm gonna flip over to my calculator, and I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in, and I'm gonna see what it looks like. So I like to use technology first, right? Get an idea of what my graph should look like, and then I'll make sure that matches all of the traits I have listed. So I'm gonna go over to the calculator app, which is a little bit different than the, the physical calculator, but I'll get the same idea across. So let me pull this up. Oh, it looks like I was having fun here. So let me clear out all the shenanigans in here. All right, and then I am also a stats teacher. I'm gonna turn my stat plot off and let's, let's graph our function. So my numerator is x squared plus x minus two. And I wanna divide that and keep in mind, let's use the parentheses so that we divide by the correct term, x cubed minus x. All right, now, like I said, the calculator app is different from the physical calculator. If you're using the physical calculator, you would hit zoom six right now. On the app, I have to hit graph, and then there's a zoom in the bottom left corner. So let me hit zoom and then go standard there. All right, so if I take a look at that, it looks like I have three pieces to my graph, right? I have a left piece, a middle piece, and a right piece. I see a couple of vertical asymptotes at x equaling negative one and zero. That tracks with our info. I do need to figure out this max, right? And I can actually see there's some kind of min in here. It flashed by it. So I gotta figure out those two coordinates, and then that will actually assist me with my range. So you can use your, your physical calculator to do this on the app. I'm gonna hit calc, and I'm gonna go for a min here. All right, and I think the min is somewhere, somewhere around negative three. So I'm gonna do a left endpoint of negative six, a right endpoint, I'll go negative two. And then it's telling me that that max is at, what do we have here? We have it at negative 3.414 comma negative 0.172. And I can see the X and Y coordinate there. And again, this will be a little bit different on the physical calculator, but let me write that ordered pair down just so I have that in my notes. All right, so let me go ahead and scroll here. So I found a, I should, I think I said max, I, I meant to say min. So I had the min at negative 3.414 comma negative 0 0.172 and I need to find that max also so let me take note of that let's go back to my calculator and let's find this max so now I want to find the max but really I want to find this max and it's between my vertical asymptotes at negative 1 and 0 and I can't use those values for the endpoints when I when I use my calculator function because they come out as undefined so what I mean by that is instead of up here typing negative one I'm going to type something close to negative one like negative 0.99 and then on the right I can't type in x equaling zero again it's not in my domain it's a vertical asymptote so I'm going to pick something close to it but on the, the left side of it on the negative side of it so maybe like negative 0.01 and then when I hit enter you can see that my x coordinate is negative 5.86 and my y coordinate is negative 5.86 828 and let me go ahead and write that down all right so we have this at negative five oops no that was a decimal point negative 0 0.586 and then negative 5.828 so with all of this let's get going on on graphing now I'm gonna zoom in on this or just simple or um, scrunch it in a bit so we can see all of this all right so I if I'm looking at all of the numbers that are in here, they're not too large. So I'm gonna scale my axes 
by every two squares is a unit. So one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, and five. And let me go this way also. All right, this would be negative five, and then one, two, three, four, five, negative five. So let's start putting all of this information in. The first thing I have is an x-intercept at negative two, zero. All right, I have no y-intercepts. I have two vertical asymptotes, and since I'm on this iPad, I'm actually gonna use different colors here just so we can see it. I have one at negative one, and I have one on the y-axis, or really we can call that the line y equals zero. Okay, or x, yeah, I should say that's x equals zero. Um, and then I have an end behavior asymptote at y equals zero. Okay, I have a whole, let me go back to this, at one and then three halves, so there's a whole there. I have a min at negative 3.414 and then negative 1.72, so somewhere around there. And then I have a max at negative 5.86 and then negative 5.828, which ooh, would actually be oh, down here. I didn't get it all in, that's fine. Now we know this part goes like this. Right? We know this part here goes up like so. This one came down, and if you're wondering where I'm getting that, let me just remind us that if I look at my graph, that is the shape of my graph. So I'm just copying that onto my paper, or onto my iPad, I should say. And then this one is gonna go up, it's gonna hit the, the min there and then go to the horizontal asymptote. So looking at the range, and let me color code this so we can see it. Looks like I start, I got two down arrows and I go from negative infinity to this Y value. That's the beginning. So negative infinity and that Y value is negative 5.828 and I do hit that number. And then I start at this minimum and I go up to positive infinity. And if you're thinking, well, what about this hole here? Do I have to rule that out of the, the range? You don't because this point here takes care of that y value. So I'm gonna start at that minimum y value of negative 0.172, head up to infinity, and there we go. So let me go ahead and, and enlarge this a little bit, but that is, well, actually, I'm gonna shrink it so we can see all of it. There is my graph and all of the traits, all right? Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.